and it'll fit right up there. We'll be able to clamp it all together. But before we do, before we clamp it up finally, we've just got to seal it off. Obviously, the fit on this isn't going to be too good. There's going to be a bit of, bit of uh, space there, and we've got a few holes there to plug up. And what I do is I use this many seal. This you can buy it from any of the automotive shops. It's quite easily obtained, quite cheap, um, and it's it takes you know up to 300 degrees. It'll be act, it'll be right for this job. It seals anything off. So so I can just take a little bit in my finger. Just block off those holes especially the one underneath here because it'll be a bit hard to get to by the time we it's a bit messy this stuff but it'll dry off just carefully seal that off there have a couple of goes at it, this is a bit soft this stuff but it won't take long to dry Just watch that it doesn't go too far through into the into the bearing itself. That's okay. That won't matter. That'll go hard there. And we'll drill that out when we've finished casting the bearings. I wouldn't touch it there because it'll spread over the over the um, the tin surface and then it'll prevent it from sticking. Just leave it, it'll go hard. happy with that one there. Now the next thing when we put it on we need to make a dam at the top here to, uh, to hold the material. So what I've done is I've just cut up a couple of strips of mild steel, one millimetre plate, just bent it around something like that, just bent it around that, formed it up and now I can cut it to shape. One there just going to put that in there like that. Get my tin snips. Snip that off. Somewhere about there. That'll be about it there, a little bit more. Yeah, that'll be good. Same with this one. Somewhere about there. Lovely. Okay, now we can carefully put that together now. Okay, so there we are. Very carefully pop that on there. And with a little bit of mani seal, we can just give it a touch. One point there. Just there.
leave it down for initial effect. Now that's pretty well in place. See it there, it's pretty pretty well true. Now if we leave that for half an hour, that'll set like concrete and we'll be able to then be able to put the rest of it on without it moving. Alright, similarly with this one, we can put that in place and lock it in place with a little bit of mani seal and then come back in an hour or so and um, and then finish sealing it off. Okay, we're ready to go. Right, now we've come back after about an hour or so and you can see the the muffler putty has gone quite hard, still a bit soft, but it's firm enough now for us to run around the rest of it and seal it off. Run around there. I ran around the bottom here before. Um, it's still pretty soft, but you can see it fits in there. What I did, I used the back of the paste brush here and just got in there to shape it. Went right round the lugs there because we don't want any white metal coming out of those when we start to pour. And it's fairly fluid. It'll it'll flow. It'll flow down a thread. That's why it's important to to get all these just covered up. The muffler putty is pretty good seal. It's a very good sealing agent. Provided we've got it over the surfaces. There we are. Just put a little bit down in the bottom there. Make sure it doesn't leak. It's best to get it now because once it starts to pouring it's pretty hot and we don't want it flowing in our boot. Just go over those holes there again, give them a little bit more. And I think that's pretty good. You can set it up on a couple of bricks like that, it makes it pretty level and we can pour from there. What I like to do is is to uh, give it a gentle heat before we start. See if I can light this torch. Be good now what that does is just puts a bit of heat in the base there it's like a muffler when you first put it on a car or something you give it a little bit of heat to start with and let it uh, dry off it just assists it in drying off gets rid of all the moisture in it we'll eventually heat it up uh, before we pour the bearing we'll put a fair bit of heat into it so that um, when the metal goes in it'll bond to it very well now the white metal itself there's a piece it's um, it's about 90% tin. If that was lead, it'd be quite heavy, quite dense. But that's quite quite uh, quite light. There's about four of those cakes make up about a kilo. And you need a, you'll probably need a kilo to do your um, to do your job. Um, you, the best place to get it is from the local hardware or the local engineering supply, like Blackwoods or someone like that. Um, get good quality stuff like uh, diesel engine stuff or aeroplane um, white metal. Um, you'll probably have to pay $80 a kilo for it, um, but you can use it over again. You don't have to waste it. You, once you turn it, you can then remelt it again and use it again. I wouldn't use the old bearings. These are 100 years old and 
the material in those wasn't as good as as the the other 10% of metal that goes into this. There's a lot of things like antimony, cadmium, and so forth that go into into these to make them a lot um, a lot harder and a lot dur more more durable. Um, the main thing is is when you heat it, you don't burn it. If you heat it too much, then it'll give off dangerous fumes. So make sure you're in an open area like this, and you just melt the white metal. Don't overheat it. And to melt it, we're just going to use the old the old stove again. The $15 stove we get at our can store. That's quite enough to do it to do the, the job. Um, I have a ladle here which I made up many years ago. Just a, a piece of uh, three mil plate that I shaked out and heated it up in a forge and over a piece of pipe with a hammer I beat it out to that shape and then put a bit of a spout on the front here. You can use a piece of pipe. Just get a piece of black pipe from your engineer supply co and put a base in it and a handle on it. It's quite easy to make one up. But um, I find that nice and easy because you can go straight in and pour straight out of it. Nice handle on it and so forth. They're not hard to make. Uh, you might even be able to pick one up at the second hand shop. So what we do now is we can start it up. There. We can put in, we'll put in a couple of, of, uh, of blobs. Um, and we'll melt that off. And what I normally do is use a pine stick or a stick. There it is. It's just the end of one of my flux brushes. I just uh, use a bit of emery paper and taken the, the paint off and I can use that as a, a paddle to stir it around once it heats up. And that'll take probably 10 minutes to heat up and get molten. Meanwhile, while that's going, I can just give a bit more heat into this bearing here. 